Sí, en Auto 060 y estoy ahora aquí con mi amigo y colega Jorge Cochran. ¿Cómo está, Jorgito? Allá en California, ¿no? Disfrutando. Bueno, como siempre, California un día muy bonito comparado con el resto del clima que hay, creo, en, en la parte este, pero por eso es que en estas épocas del año vienen a correr por aquí en Phoenix. Eh, ahora le toca a California Speedway, conocido como Fontana. Eh, donde perdió la vida un gran piloto canadiense de indicar eh, Greg Moore, por eso lo recordamos mucho, pero ahora con esto de la NASCAR, con los nuevos autos de la generación 6, sexta generación, parece que tienen un buen auto en sus manos para poder eh, retomar esos viejos días en que los duelos eran espectaculares. Bueno, que es lo que se ha visto hasta ahora en la temporada de la NASCAR, ¿no? En realidad bastante... Eh, eh, carreras muy cerradas eh, todos los pilotos tienen aparentemente los autos muy muy a punto, muy bien opuestos y la diferencia a veces del lugar 1 al 30 son un segundo medio segundo es muy emocionante es muy muy emocionante el poder ver cómo estos eh, gladiadores modernos a una precisión que necesitas a 200 millas por hora, no es broma por afuera parece que fuera como ir a correr las olimpiadas y llegan a los 100 metros planos y dicen, bueno, están corriendo, pero llegar ahí tú sabes lo que, lo que cuesta, ¿no? Y además lo que toma de, 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 de poder sacrificarte y saber correr y llegar ahí, ¿no? Claro, porque la gente lo ve eh, y la mayoría de estas carreras son en óvalos y entonces creen que es simplemente poner la mano en el timón y... En, en cierto ángulo y el, el auto va dando vueltas, pero no hay mucha habilidad en vuelta en todo esto. Eh, y Jorge, cuéntanos entonces, eh, van a estar transmitiendo en Fox Deportes en español para Estados Unidos, ¿no? Esto es un gran logro. Esto es un gran logro. Significa que nuestra comunidad, eh, ya eh, para mí significa ya que hemos llegado. Porque para que NASCAR, que es muy americano, muy gringo, eh, muy redneck, como le llaman, eh, para que NASCAR y ahora Fox Deportes, que es mucho fútbol, Messi, Barca, Real Madrid, eh, fútbol mexicano, el Chivas, el Cruz Azul, el América. Entonces, para que ellos eh, hagan eh, esto, esas transmisiones de NASCAR, carreras de autos al mercado latino en directo, eh, en realidad yo como aficionado lo, hace años que lo, lo esperaba claro. pero ellos no ellos veían básquet béisbol, college fútbol fútbol americano es cierto, veían todo eso como, como el, el, lo que hay que transmitir para los hispanos claro. y, y yo les decía oye, nosotros nos gustan los autos de carrera, tenemos las Panamericanas tenemos los hermanos Rodríguez sí, y hay gran afición a Fangio, tenemos el gran premio argentino, Camino del Inca, eh, la Buenos Aires, Caracas. Nosotros estamos en la República Dominicana, es eh, donde más Porsche se venden en toda Latinoamérica. <risa> Nos, nosotros tenemos una gran afición por los autos. No, 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 los bueno, autos son aburridos. Pues así ahora en Fox Deportes en español, aquí para Estados Unidos, la NASCAR con Jorge Cochran. Muchas gracias, Jorge, por tu tiempo. Eh, vamos a estarte siguiendo ahí durante las carreras el fin de semana entonces. Muchas gracias. ¿eh? Gracias a ti, estamos en vivo. Eh, gracias Jorge Cochran ahí eh, desde California para la carrera de la NASCAR. Y ahora de California vamos a Detroit y del español al inglés. Now we we'll go from California to Detroit and from Spanish to English to talk to John McCormick from the World Car of the Year Awards. How are you, John? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us about uh, the awards that are going to be presented next week at the Auto Show uh, in New York, right? That's correct, on Thursday morning. Yeah, John McCorney, he's a uh, director of the steering committee of the World Car of the Year Awards, which uh, it's a very important award. I think the manufacturers really expect it uh, with uh, a lot of anxiety to see how it is. And there's, uh, can you explain a little bit about the history of these awards? I think it's been a few years already since they started, right? Yes, we, we've been going for nine years now, and we're the only global awards program uh, that recognizes cars across the globe. It's a fairly complicated process, because of course some cars are different in different markets, but we try and straighten all it out and uh, give an award for what we think is the best car of the year. 
and then some subcategories for performance, green car, and design. Yeah. So for the car of the year, we have the Mercedes-Benz A-Class. We were talking to Christian Bosick from Mercedes-Benz actually in the first segment of the show. This car is not available in the States. Then you have the Porsche, the both variants, the Boxer and the Cayman. The Scion, right. which is a double car, like a twin twin car with a VRC from a Subaru and the Scion FRS, and in other parts of the world it's called the Toyota 86 or GT86, and then the Volkswagen right. Golf. Uh, and Volkswagen has been in your uh, top list for uh, a few years, right? Yes, Volkswagen's done well. Um, the up uh, scored a victory before the Volkswagen up, which is not sold in the US. It's a small, small subcompact. Uh, the Golf obviously is a very strong contender, um, being such a, a long-lived car and so widely sold around the world. So you know, quite quite big expectations for that car. But uh, the Boxster and Cayman are very strong contenders. Uh, I think in the current, the new generation, they've really improved a great deal. Yeah. So people and think that this it's better than the 911. <laughs> Yeah, there is, there is some of that, and the 911 has won uh, a performance award from us before, so, uh, but no, indeed, the, the Cayman and Boxster really come forward in their latest generation. And also, the Toyota AT6 and the Subaru BRZ is uh, really an interesting contender, especially from Toyota. I mean, for, you could argue that it, it shows that Toyota can actually produce a car that's fun to drive. So exactly. it's a really exciting car. Yeah, and then on the sports award, uh, the sports car of the year award, uh, you also have the Boxster, the Cayman, the Scion, and the uh, VRC, and the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. Um, can you explain a, a little bit of how the, those are those categories can have the same candidates? Well, it's just a way we, we select an overall list of candidates uh, for uh, all, all for the, all categories, and then uh, you know some cars naturally double up, um, come to the top. Uh, you know, a car like the Toyota is a sports car, but is also uh, a general uh, a car for the masses, if you like. So, so it can fall into both categories. Obviously, the Ferrari is such an exclusive car that it yeah. would be not eligible for something like World Car. Um, but uh, so that's how it works. And the Boxster and Cayman are also, uh, you know, accessible sports cars, relatively speaking, so that they they fall into the World Car category as well. Yeah, uh, it's a good. Then you have the green uh, car of the year, and you have a um, well, one model that is not sold in the U.S. The Renault Zoe, and then the Model S from Tesla, and the Volvo plug-in. Uh, Hybrid B60. That's a that's a pretty interesting category. I think that if I didn't vote, I, I'm not part of the judging, but uh, I, I I see good chances for the Tesla. I don't know. What do you think? Well, yes, the Tesla has come to the forefront with you know some other awards. For, I think most trends gave it an award, and um, it seems to have been attracting a lot of attention, even though of course not in production uh, yet. Um, we do have uh, in our World Car of the Year category, we, you have to be in production and actually on sale in two continents in the world, at least. Um, but uh, the Tesla, you know, may be great because it is it is uh, a very interesting car and has seemed to, uh, to attract a lot of positive attention from the media. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, these cars, uh, the U.S. has the, the most strangest um, requirements for safety and all those things. So, and these cars technically could be sold anywhere in the world, right? But it's not yet in, in every market. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing with Tesla, of course, is a very small company, and they have to walk before they run, and, uh, you know, so selling in other markets is going to take a while, um, and, you know, there's a lot of bridges to be crossed for that company in various ways before they can expand that far. Yeah, and then finally you have the Design Award of the Year, and uh, you have uh, the Aston Martin Vanquish and the Jaguar F-Type, the new model from the British company. Yes, and also the Mazda 6, um, and uh, I think it's interesting, I'm just driving a Mazda 6 press car at the moment, and it is a very striking design, um, and I like the way that some companies are making mid-size sedan designs more interesting, yeah. uh, and Mazda's one of them, it's a very sleek looking car. So, yeah. uh, what, what a coincidence, because I also have a Mazda 6. Mine is red. What color is yours? <laughs> <laughs> my one is white, and it looks good in white. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, actually I actually posted some pictures on my Facebook page yesterday on the red one, so I invite you to check them out. 
Yes, indeed, yeah. But it's up against some pretty heavy competition in the yeah. F-Type and the Vanquish, of course. Um, and uh, the F-Type is an interesting car in itself. You know, Jaguar is going through a sort of whole sea change of design uh, from its classic years, and the F-Type is definitely a, uh, stepping out from, you know, the old days of the E-Type and so on. So it'll be interesting to see how that does, too. Very interesting. So uh, next week in uh, New York, I'm going to see you there, and thank you personally for this interview and your time. And uh, we'll see who it wins in these four, four categories. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Larry. Thank you very much, John uh, McCormick from the uh, World Car of the Year Awards Committee. Um, y ahí estaba la entrevista con John McCormick del eh, Comité del Jurado del uh, Auto Mundial del Año, el único premio mundial que se va a entregar la próxima semana en el Auto Show de Nueva York y estaremos ahí con los ganadores eh, Auto Mundial del Año, Auto Deportivo del Año, Auto Verde del, Verde del Año, perdón, y el Diseño Automotriz del Año y bueno, ahora cuando regresemos en Auto 060 en el último segmento de este show vamos a hablar de una iniciativa muy interesante que tiene la Zion que tiene uno de los candidatos al Auto Deportivo del Año y al Auto del Año sobre un programa que se llama Motivate, y esto es para impulsar a empresarios jóvenes a desarrollar sus carreras, y este es otro aspecto de la industria automotriz que a veces conversamos, eh, y es muy interesante hablar de ellos, porque eh, los fabricantes de autos no solamente están dedicados al negocio puro y duro de hacer dinero con los autos que venden, sino que también están apoyando a las comunidades, y en este caso van a escuchar lo que tiene que ofrecer la Zion con este programa que se llama Motivate. Esto es Auto 060 y ya regresamos. Yo soy Javier Mota. De antemano, gracias a DJ Cafa y por la ayuda en los controles.